Airport Information Mike. Wind at 320 degrees at 6, temperature 5, 3, altimeter 3000. People like you, organizations like Rain Check, I love you guys. Down, ready now. You are clear for takeoff runway 21 left. Winds are calm. Stand by for the free trans on uniform. It's showtime. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Ramp Check Aviation Podcast. I'm Tony. Hi. I'm Aaron. I'm Ryan. <laughs> Hi. Hey, Ryan and I are together again. Wow. See, look. Again? It's real. Like, touch. <laughs> We're never together. I know. Here, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. You pat. guys are weird. See, he's right next to me. Anyway, whatever. It's not fake. We are together. <laughs> oh. By the boy. way, a l- little disclaimer. Bh uh, texted me and said, "Oh no, he's still working, so he probably won't be able to spam tonight." Work, what work? Oh, and man. just wanted to give a shout out to Barry Hancock with Red Thunder Air Shows. It shows that they joined. So I don't know if Barry's still watching, if you're still on. Oh, Barry, nice I, job at Luke last Kirby weekend. <laughs> we weren't there at Luke, but uh, saw plenty of photos and videos. Nice. So anyway. Welcome. That's, that's awesome. Sorry, right, you knew that was coming. Yeah. Hey, if you're wondering what's going on with um, <clears throat> the patch on Aaron's microphone. <laughs> thought i that up there. <laughs> that's, right. that's a pretty cool new one right gonna, i want to hear that again yeah. <laughs> sounds like after i've eaten taco bell kind of <laughs> well the, the title of tonight's episode is uh um oh put that back up there will you yeah uh barry he responds this is what's up dudes missed you guys i know we we wanted to be down at luke but uh are you yeah, we really did. Show? I haven't looked at the, the latest schedule. No, um, we want to be at every air show. Well, no, no. I, I Yeah, of course. Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I don't know if uh, Barry's going to be at Hill or not. You, you guys remember when he used to fly the T-6? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. that's awesome. Barry, we need you to come up to Hill Air Force Base. <laughs> Hang out with so now, now, now he's flying uh, the Yak with, uh, with his buddy. They, they've got a cool routine going on. But uh, yeah, Red is Thunder that a two-seater? Uh, no, not the one he's flying. Oh, no. Okay, all right. Um, but I, well, I, at least I don't. I don't think so. I don't know. Wondering if you know the back seater starts, you know, talking some shit. He looks back. <laughs> it's like yakety yak. Don't talk bad. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, Tony. Okay. <laughs> hey, uh, I wonder if the chats are working on uh, YouTube Awful. tonight. Hopefully they are. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully uh, chats are working. Let's, uh, gosh, maybe I better oh. check because it's a little quiet. Uh, B- Barry does say, uh, not yet. Uh, we'll be at the Spanish Fork, though. They they have a like a, oh, like cool. a fly-in air show at Spanish Fork. Yeah, so. yeah. That'll be cool. Nice. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, uh, J- Jess and Jen 2019 checks in. Hopefully the weather will be better here soon. Yeah, you got that right. It's been uh, crazy here in Utah. Yes. But uh, but anyway, uh, Jess and Jen, 2019, howdy, guys. Thanks for watching. By the way, the chat is working. And look who's Great. in. Hey, Carver. It's 2 a.m. It is definitely <laughs> ramp check time. A.D. That's well, right. It's, it's, it's yeah. been a while. Been so, a while. so as I was saying, the <clears throat> uh, title of tonight's episode is Goes Bye-Bye. <laughs> Um, so, uh, if you read the, uh, description, um, the, uh, the United States Air Force A-10 Thunderbolt, uh, two, two. Uh, A-10C Thunderbolt two. There you go. Um, the, uh, demo team announced that this is their final, uh, season. That's actually kind of sad. That's sad. I know, I know. I mean, the writing's been on the wall, man. The Air Force has been trying to retire the A-10 for for a few years now. Um, yeah, it makes sense, yes, but you hate to see such an iconic aircraft go. Is it um, because is it because the A-10 is too masculine? Probably. <laughs> yeah. It's got too big of a gun. Yeah, it's you know, <laughs> it's it's too white. It's too privileged. Maybe. No, um, no, no. It just it's not has too big privilege. of a gun. It, it's, it's mostly uh, that uh, if it was ever going to be used in the Pacific theater is what the military is focusing on. So, 
So, uh, you know, with, yeah, I mean, with, it, it, does, it, like, it, it, make, it, it, it would take like a week to get there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. Right. So, <laughs> right. And doesn't the military make decisions based on how cool av geeks think the aircraft are? Yeah. Or am I wrong? They well, they should, should for some of it. Yeah, well, yeah. I know, right. Jeez. I mean, it, it'll be sad to see it go, but I guess, you know, it does so, make sense. I mean, I do remember sucks. seeing, um, seeing the A-10 demo for the very first time when I was young, I might've been 10, 11 years old, maybe 12 years old. And, um, it was at the Provo airport and they really demo. Yeah, huh? yeah. And I remember the very first time I saw it and it was so cool because it did a low pass down the runway and then he just pitched straight up, turned around, came back and just landed. Yeah. Like with, within feet. Well, I, I think yeah. one of the, the other cool features with the A10 that I remember from the demo was how they paint the little uh, canopy on the the belly, so yeah, yeah, you can oh, yeah. tell like which way it is, whether it's mm -hmm. inverted, uh, you know, which way it's gonna turn. I just think that's so badass. <laughs> <laughs> so this it? one, this is upside down, but it doesn't have the uh, canopy paint underneath. But this is when it was painted in the uh the you know the p47 yeah that's, legacy that's awesome. thunderbolt paint Th this was in uh wyoming when we were out there you guys remember we went to the, the Cheyenne Cheyenne air trip. show during, oh, the, during the, the whole COVID during the coup the yep. covid the the the, the nation's first drive-in air show you remember yeah that? yep i remember <laughs> what a fucking joke sorry <laughs> Well, um, the air was, show was cool. It was great to go, and it was kind yeah, of the, cool. the air show was cool. Yeah, not the, the COVID was, was the everything was the else joke. was was a joke. So, uh, Aid says, "Been far too long. Work got in the way." Well, damn it, Aid, you got to have your priorities. <laughs> He's got them straight tonight. You know, yes, he yeah, does. We're good tonight. You know, if work's getting in the way, you're like, dude. Yeah, I've oh, got to yeah. watch the Ramp Check Aviation podcast. You know who those guys are, right? <laughs> oh, right. you have the crickets queued up. Um, <laughs> here we go. Ready? Here we go. <laughs> you know, Star Lord. Anyway, yeah. Um, and uh, also from Aid, uh, if the way European forces are going to be with going to air shows and seeing nothing but F 35 <laughs> I know, right? That's Which true. would still be cool, but it's you know, right? You want to F thirty F thirty five's kick ass, but yeah, obviously you want to. And then a uh, bit of a Wadman, variety, right? Wadman checking in. Hey, Wadman, um, what's up, dude? Can we get a shout out for the Western Museum of Flight for being incredible hosts? What? What's yes, uh, host? yes. Hey, so Western Museum of Flight, thank you for being incredible hosts. There's the shout out. <laughs> that literal? Never mind. No. So anyway, I'll uh, I'll show you guys um, what he's talking about in just a minute here. Just go okay. ahead and continue. Okay. Cool. Um, also, Brady Kendrick checking hate, in. Hate to see it go. Opens the doors and funds for NGAD and other cool stuff. Hopefully to come soon, though. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And you know. That's why we were saying it does make sense mm -hmm. that it's happening. It just, I mean, when it's one of your favorites, it's uh, well, and, and to see it go, um, let's see here. I'm just going to ask a quick question. Tony's typing. If you can't hear that. <laughs> what, what's he typing? Sorry, I'm folks. It is a live stream. I'm, so, I'm uh, something. Oh, he's Googling something. Gotcha. So, 1976 is when the A-10 went into service. So, you know, maintenance costs on those things are uh, probably a little high. Yeah. Now, now, not every single airframe is from 1976. Let me get that clear. But still, they, uh, yeah. they're pretty old. Yeah. And they cost yeah. a lot to maintain. Brady has a great yeah. point. Uh, opens doors and funds for NGADs and other cool stuff. You know, hopefully... Um, you know, uh, dark energy, you know, anti-gravity. Excuse me. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> cool stuff like that. So, so uh, let, let's, uh, okay, after Aid Carver's comment, then uh, let's see. That's yeah, a great that's great. Yeah, from yeah. that A-10 photo cool you put up. Yeah. yeah. There it is. Yeah. Yep. Very there cool. you go. Yeah, that was great. They got rid of that, though, like two years ago or last year. I love that paint. Yeah, it's a good one. A good one but anyway okay so 
Um, going back to Wadman, here we go. So the cool thing about this photo, not only is that the YF-23 there. Yeah, that is the 23, isn't it? But Wadman also has the custom shirt that we made him on with the YF-23. Oh, oh nice. Prototypes on there. And he's got the 65th Aggressor inspired shoes on, F-35 shoes on. So oh, he does. Wad, Wadman, that, and, but... and it's probably a ramp check hat on too he's got. So <laughs> anyway. Nice. Give okay, a give so, a shout out for Wadman there for not only representing but uh, there's a true av geek right there for you. So where is the Western Love Museum it. of Flight? It is in California. Okay, uh, I'm not sure where. Oh, I was hey, uh, yeah, Wadman, go ahead and fill us in exactly where where it is at. But uh, oh, he says thanks. Yeah, guys. yeah that was for <laughs> your your literal yeah. shout out. That was for the shout out. So uh, we got uh, Rob V. Checking oh, in. Yeah. Good evening from yeah, Connecticut, that's, gentlemen. That's, uh, that's that's Rob, guys. We had him on the podcast, remember? Oh, yeah. Rob, okay. What's up, dude? He, yeah. used, he used to live here oh. in Utah, and he, he just recently moved. Yeah. I believe, yeah. yeah, that, I mean, I'm assuming that's that's his handle on YouTube. Right. And I mean, his initials are Rob V. <laughs> however, he may not know us because he called us gentlemen. <laughs> that's true <laughs> yeah right <laughs> and uh wadman uh responding at <laughs> torrents an hour from costa mesa okay all, all right. right yeah that's uh that would be a cool place to visit yeah oh yeah. Rob. Yeah. Yeah. it <laughs> is okay, okay. <laughs> just make it, just Rob. making sure because there's probably other rob v's out there but i didn't know what your youtube handle was so <laughs> just <Nice>. making sure <laughs> So that's good. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Um, what's uh, what's our first story? Tonight? So, well, we've kind of been talking about this. Already, oh, okay. So, so we're yeah. just. Uh, <laughs> it, sounded, it sounded like Ryan's like, okay. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Hey, okay, well, have a good uh, night. Big gulps, huh? Take off. See you later. <laughs> Take off, eh? <laughs> exactly. So, just the um, just really quick as we go through this, the uh, this is coming from the aviationist uh, dot com. Um, the A-10 demo team has just announced their farewell tour 2024. The U.S. Air Force A-10C Thunderbolt II demonstration team, the unit in charge of highlighting the A-10's capabilities during air shows across the United States, and to recruit, retain, and inspire the next generation of airmen. The team will perform its duty one last... God, I hate saying that. I for know. one last season this year. In fact, as announced on social media, 2024 is going to mark the final air show season for the Warthog for the Warthog demo. <laughs> yes it is. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> I love that noise. That's a cool picture though. Oh, that is. I, I love the the paint on both of those. I mean there's just yeah, something yeah, about absolutely. a badass paint job on yeah. an aircraft. Hey guys, before yeah. before you guys wrap it up, can you um can you please maybe just... Uh, That's what she said. Thank you. Um, <laughs> just just paint one of the A-10s to look like Ghost or Splinter. Yeah, just one. Would, just one of them. Be, just one. That would be cool. I mean, so, they've had some pretty away. sick some pretty sick paint over the years. Though. They, had, they had a snake one. They, you know, I mean, obviously. So here, here's another shot from, from that air show that we saw. This was the Heritage flight, which was cool. Oh, yeah. They actually had the A-10... Uh, demo team uh, lead the uh, the flight of the F twenty two and F thirty five, which was pretty sick. Damn, that is um, awesome! How about that's that right. That's right. <laughs> wow, that's even cooler. That came out of nowhere. Front, front. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> working the soundboard tonight. Yes, exactly. That, there you really, go. I literally thought somebody was behind <laughs> you and started yelling. Well, <laughs> dope, back. dope snuck up on you guys how about him oh, yeah that, that worked thanks that, dope that dude. was a cool shot aaron i'm sure which oh. which air show was that that was the cheyenne one that we went to oh that was cheyenne okay yep that yeah, was, yeah. <laughs> who keeps trying to turn that off well i turned it off and then somebody <laughs> clicked it again and then put it on but um oh man nice so but, uh, uh 
Let's Rob see. has another comment. Let's let's go ahead and read it. Uh, right. Just to follow up about the F-35 at Airshow comment earlier, we all said the same thing about the F-16 in the 80s and 90s, but the Swedes, French, will have their own aircraft. That's very true. Mm-hmm. We'll still see Grippens and we'll still see, I mean, there'll be Typhoons still. Um, uh, the Germans still have the Tornado. That'll go away soon, though. And then, of course, you can't forget about the Rafales, so no. that'll be good. And pretty much every country now is working on, or at least groups of countries are working on their own indigenous fifth gen fighters. Um, you see that Korea is already flying their KF 21, which basically looks like an F 22 and an F 35 together. Gee, you know, I, um, I know exactly. Uh, the, the Turks just, you know, they've got theirs. I think they just flew a prototype of theirs or maybe the, the unpiloted version. I don't, I don't remember exactly. Can you really- can you really but take everybody's the, work you know the, the well let me ask this question really quick can you yeah. really take a sixth generation fighter from turkey seriously well fifth generation it's I not mean, really oh, six fifth. it's right, kind okay. of but i mean you know, come on turkey well i mean turkey seriously anyway <laughs> just saying Finish well they, mean, they are a part of nato um they do have access to a lot of good information they were a part of the f-35 program until uh, they pissed everybody off purchasing Russian surface-to-air missiles. Well, yeah, um, so how are they still even part of NATO? Well, I mean, it, 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 it's... From it's the enemy. Quote, unquote, know, dude. quote, unquote, yeah. enemy. Sorry. I don't know. I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see how it plays out, but they still have the F-16s, you know. They, they, they still were still able to use uh, air bases and, Try you know. asshole! <laughs> but anyway... Everybody's working on some kind of a fifth gen fighter or something. Everyone's got an angle. But anyway, hey, uh, Instagram, just want to say hi to Utah underscore Rudder Vaders. Those are all those awesome KC 135 boom operators. Hell yeah. That's great. That's a great Thanks. account. Great account to follow. Uh, Kyle, Kyle Ruby dot photo also joined. What's up, uh, dude? How you doing, Kyle? Kyle, once again, is the helmet wrapper. Yes, he is. <laughs> No, not that. I need him to come up with a sick <laughs> rap for the ramp check character. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> nice. And then Jetterazzi. Hey, he joined on Instagram Live. Jetterazzi. So what's up, nice. man? All right. Yeah, it was good so meeting him. I just want to go back to uh, let's just finish off the A10 story really quick. Finish it off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> End of an era. Anyway. Um, let's do it. So uh, basically, the official post uh, from the A10, you know. It is with heavy hearts that we announce that the demo season will be its final one. We want to extend our heartfelt thanks, blah, blah, blah. The farewell tour does not come unexpected, though. Last month, the 355th wing at Davis Monthan, where the demo team is based, begun divesting its fleet of A-10 aircraft after nearly 50 years. The first model of the aircraft to arrive at Davis Monthan was an A-10A on March 12th of 1976. March 2nd. March 2nd of 1976, yeah. sorry. Uh, This model was assigned to the 355th Tactical Fighter Wing that arrived here in 71 and replaced the Vought A7D Corsair flown by the 355th. Um, Mm -hmm. The 355th Tactical Fighter Wing was later reclassified the 355th Tactical Fighter Training. Jesus, can't they just make it easy to say? (laughs) Uh, Anyway, um, so the Air Force plans to divest the entire fleet of A-10s within the next three to five years when the iconic jet will be replaced by the F-35. So um, anyway, Man. I, I thought there was some more juicy information in there, but it's basically just uh, yeah, just, it's just, just, just press BS. Just house so, cleaning yep. press stuff. But Dot in the eyes. Yeah, it'll, 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 it'll be sad. Oh, um, yeah. But uh, at least we'll be able to see the uh, A-10s flying for the next, you know, three to five years. But it yep. will be sad to see a uh, demo team go down it's just kind of like when the uh f-15 demo teams were all you know canceled yeah um, yeah i would i would say uh you know air combat command needs to uh if they're going to get rid of the a-10 they need to either bring back the f-15e demonstration team Mm -hmm. or the f-15ex demonstration team uh because the air force is going to buy about a hundred of those jets or so well Um, there's always hell or, or 
What about the F-117 demo team? It's still flying. Right. Well, yeah, and I'm, I was hoping, you know, just on my, um, <laughs> my demo team bucket list, uh, at the top of that is the C-5 demo team. <laughs> um, right. And then a close <laughs> second for me would be the B-52 demo team. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, you know, you could do the B-21 demo team. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, those the demos, they, they'll do flybys and, and, and those type of things. But, uh, you know, you, you, th there's so little of those aircraft around and operational. I know. You can't dedicate them to be flying around. You I know. Yeah, I'm I know. just, <laughs> you know, I'm just being ab geekery here. Um, I know. Uh, Rob V, I wonder if they'll do a hog smoke this year. It was scheduled for the fall at uh, the DMAFB. Well. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> well, you, you would hope that they would at least do that for the next, you know, couple cycles uh, till they actually do retire it. I mean, so they, they is, still they still need hog smoke for everybody, please. What's that? Let's define hog smoke for everybody. Oh, it's 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 kind of it's kind of like a like a William Tell, but just for A10s. It's oh, it's God. like a it's like a big gathering of A10 units um that that are invited to participate and it's basically who can tear shit up the most efficient and best way that'd be the final send-off <laughs> yeah i yeah, think i think for the now if the a10 demo team if you guys are watching mm -hmm. um really what we need is uh during the a10 demos this year at the different air shows live fire Oh yeah, not with a thirty mil. Let's hear it. <laughs> dude, dude, B twenty B twenty one demo live fire. Yeah, Tony's like, like fucking on something tonight, you, man. The hell? That's a little high? too much. No, wouldn't that be cool? Come on. Oh well, shit, yeah, it would be put cool. A, but... Put a tank out there. Just let's be a little reasonable it. here, and yeah. uh, let's do a live fire demo of the A ten. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's Come what on. Hog Smoke's about. Uh, Rob was actually at the last Hog Smoke up in Idaho. Um, that would have been an awesome one to attend. Um, but, uh, he got some great content for that, but Hey, Kyle Ruby ain't wrong. Duty X demo needs to happen. Yep. Absolutely. It does. If, 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 if Boeing would no. freaking make some of those damn jets, I mean, what have they got four of them made already? God, they're, they're supposed to, I, I think the air force budget next year, or this year is supposed to buy 18 more and, and the air force keeps adjusting the amount they want to buy. They, they, you know, they want to buy over a hundred and then they want to buy under a hundred and now they're around a hundred again. So it's like in the end, it'll be interesting to see, but hopefully they get at least, you know, over a hundred of those jets. Cause you know, it's well, a badass jet, man. The amount of ordnance that thing could carry in missiles. I can't wait to see him. Yeah. That yeah. thing's awesome. I can't decide because all the money's going to other shit. And yeah, you exactly. Well, there's <laughs> apparently there's a new bridge that needs to be built. Now oh yeah. In Baltimore. Yeah, right. <laughs> So I guess yeah. there, there goes one or two of the F-15 EXs right there. They're going to change the number again. <sighs> but hopefully, hope, hopefully not. And we're hoping we, <laughs> we can um, see some EXs at Red Flag at some point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we we will. They just need to get more jets. Right now they're all in uh, testing and, and uh, you know, the Air Force is still just trying to get them to units. Right. Because um, the, the first EXs, I believe, are going to Oregon. National Guard, I believe. That's. Sweet. I think that's. Ky cool. Kyle would probably know the answer to that. Maybe even Rob would know the answer to that. But I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure they're going to the Oregon uh, Air National Guard first. Gotcha. Um, the EXs and to replace of, their uh, C's and D's. Right. Anyway, go ahead. Speaking of Boeing, got a little update uh, coming from them. But before we do that, dude, we we skipped right over our palate cleansing video and went to our first story. We did well. A10. Uh, you know, big news, uh, pretty, man. Pretty important stuff. But uh, okay, here we go. So this is uh, Jet Blast oh. at its finest. This is for Marcos Oliveira at Aero Marcos three two zero on X uh, hashtag Aviation. Um, safe, maybe fun. Yes, recommended. Absolutely not. Let's check out this video. Oh. <laughs> You're going to turn around and take off, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah. Nice. So, you know, there's uh, St. Martin where you can experience that jet blast. Um, and this, this is not St. Martin. I don't know yeah, what airport is this? this is. But I don't know, but it's, it's, it's Scandinavian. So right. uh, it's probably somewhere over in yep. 
Scandinavia. Somewhere close by in Europe. I don't know, Lloyd. The French are assholes. Anyway. <laughs> um, look how close. That's way off. <laughs> look how close they are. This is much closer than in uh, St. Mark. Yeah, dude. Those There's people like no high get... fence. Look at right. that. You no can just hop fence. over that fence. Yep. You could high, hop over that fence and get sucked right into one of those engines. <laughs> so, uh, Aid Carver says, looks like is that an A320 Neo, by the way? Oh, uh, really? I think it's just an. I think it's an A319. I don't think it's a Neo. Oh, those engines it, they, big. the engines didn't yeah. look big enough to be a Neo, oh, but, I, but I could be wrong. Oh, holy holy shit! shit. Look it? at those people! Oh my god! god. <laughs> it's like, yeah, come look. on, you guys are a little close. <laughs> yeah, I guess it could be a Neo. And you know, I'd once that uh, exhaust smell gets in your hair, it don't come out until you wash it. I know. It's a great smell, though. I miss oh, yeah. Ram it for is. that reason. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Tony, go go back to when it was uh, taxiing onto the runway. Okay. I just want to verify if it was a Neo or not. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a Neo. Thank you. Yeah. What I said. No, I don't think it's a 321. It, it, it is. It, it's an A319. Yeah. 19 Neo, I think. Or an A320 Neo. Yep. Do they make A319 Neos? I don't know. I it looks a little know. short for an A320. Yeah, it, it is a Neo though. Definitely not only the, not only the engines, but it also has the uh, raccoon mask, like, uh, which a lot of the Neos the, have painted. <laughs> the stone wall right in the yeah. middle. Watch this. Uh, Check out these people right girl here. Girl in like the blue skirt. Watch her go to the ground. Black shirt, scarf, blue skirt. Watch. On the left. Boom. She hits oh, the ground. So damn. Not the Check that up, Tony. Look. She. She might. Okay. So right. Hey, now which one are you which one are you talking okay, so about? So right here, but I, oh, no right one here? can see me point. She's, can you see my she's near pointer? the middle of the screen? Oh, okay. okay. She's okay. got a white scarf, black shirt. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, shirt. yeah. Just keep and, an eye on her right here. When the aircraft throttles up, it goes to the left of the screen. But watch how hard she hits the ground. Watch this. Left of the screen. Watch. Bam. Oh. oh, so actually it was the girl in the green. Yeah, it was the girl with her. Yeah, or on the other side Damn. of her. Damn. Damn. All right. Yeah, she, um, she looks like she's in here. <laughs> that, so, would be, uh, that would be fun, but uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, that's crazy. So uh, so Kyle Ruby says, yeah, Portland will be getting the first ones this summer. So yeah, Portland, Oregon. I guess I should have been more specific. And then also uh, Rob says, pretty sure it's Portland. Sure. So, yeah. yeah, good job, Aaron. Almost like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> Almost. Almost. Well done. Brady Kendrick says a little bit of uh, fuck around and find out action right there. Ha ha. Yes. Um, Slightly. So tonight's FAFO actually takes place on board an aircraft inside. So stick around for that. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, by and, the way, uh, Generazzi yeah. also says it is a Neo on that last video. Is a Neo. On Instagram live. Nice. Thanks for checking in. Appreciate it. Yes. But was it? An A320 Neo, or because we weren't sure if they had any 19 Neos. Yeah, but someone answer too, that for us, please. It looked too short to be an A320 to me. Yeah, it looked like a 19 to me. Let's yeah. see. Let's let me let me look it up right now. I bet you listening will get it very this quickly. Is the ramp check. Oh yeah, they make the 19 Neo. Okay, well yeah, there, you go. Go. there you go. There you got it. They do. It's uh 11. Let's see, 111 feet length. So, little short one. <laughs> Can hear I was Tony juggle, juggle, juggle. Maybe well, that's a maybe good move, that we need. Maybe to get. move your throat away from the mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> any more videos? Um, yeah, I oh, do have okay. another one actually. Awesome. If you want to watch, yeah, one. I want to see okay. another video. Let's see which one? Oh yeah, here we go. Let's see. We'll do one more palate cleansing video. We'll move on to our next story. Uh, let's see. Oh, wait. I missed it. I was off cue. Let's just say yes and we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> Love that one. Um, so, okay. So remember early flight school and uh, or you're flying in a small plane and, you know, they're kind of teaching you crosswind landings. You got to kind of cr crab it in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Check this shit out. Hold my beer. Jesus.
That's nuts. I can't believe the wind can even push that oh. thing like that. No. Oh my Is god. He He's gonna go around. Is he gonna go around? <laughs> oh, look at that! Nope. He did not go around. That is, that's nuts, man. Something that big doing that. <laughs> but know. I'll tell you what, there's a shitload of seat back cushions that are going to need to be replaced. <laughs> God, I yeah. wonder how much of that you can feel as a passenger. I, I was just going to think that, or I was just going to ask that. Like, <laughs> look at that. Like, no, is he got it? Do you know He's really go how is hard go that hit? I mean, oh my God, look at it. The aircraft and then swinging so big. that around like that. The aircraft's so big, though. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that guy. Wow. wow. <laughs> that was a cool one. Yeah, that was I a like fun that one. one. Yep. We got a couple more, but uh, they're gonna be. Uh, let's see. Yeah, a little bit later in the in the show, I believe. Yes. Okay. So next story. Since we were talking about Boeing, uh, Boeing, a little Boeing shakeup going on. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. So uh, it needed to happen. So we saw the headline on X and the original uh, tweet. Let's see here. Um, Which tweet are you talking about? Are you talking about the one that I just pulled up? Oh, did you pull from, one up? From yeah. Aero, Aero Crew News. Yeah, why don't you show the tweet first and then I'm on Boeing's <laughs> website. Okay, cool. So this actually just, just came over. Um, Instagram, or excuse me, X, a couple hours ago, four hours ago to be exact, uh, from at Aero Crew News, Boeing update. Boeing has announced its first ever woman to lead the company as CEO. Stephanie Pope, a Boeing employee since 1994, has been selected to lead the company out of what appears to be the biggest crisis of its history. So um, that goes uh, interesting. So, you know, as late as yesterday, I was reading and they still hadn't picked Right. Who is going to lead as the new CEO since, uh, what's his name? Um, it's, um, <clears throat> stepping uh, Dave, down. Dave Calhoun. Calhoun. I, I try to forget that name already. Cause yeah. let's just say Calhoun really yeah. has let's been a little call, bit of an underperformer. Let's just, call him, uh, let's just call Dave Calhoun, um, Boeing's Bob Iger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe, I mean, <laughs> seriously. And they, it, I mean, it's been rough, man. Taking um, <clears throat> this new position, I mean, you could look at it two ways. You could look at it like <clears throat> someone wanting the position because they want to, like, make some changes and get Boeing back on track. But it could also be a very nerve-wracking position. Mm -hmm. I mean, look what they're coming into. I mean, man, I mean, there's a there's a... There's a lot of shit to get in order with Boeing. Boeing's so. had a rough couple of weeks. But it is cool that they... Um, picked an employee since 1994. See, you know, they didn't just hire someone outside of the company. Like, but that's usually what they. It. That's usually what they do for these for these big positions. Is it's not you what know, they did at the FBO I worked at. But anyway, right? Yeah. yeah. No, but what I'm saying is they'll bring somebody from outside who is like you know a, a patent attorney or has no aviation skills whatsoever, but they were a CEO somewhere. You know, oh, that's what the you FAA were, tried to me. I thought yeah, you were saying no, I was, okay. I was yeah. totally agreeing yeah. with you. Yeah, I got you. And, you know, instead of bringing some guy who was the CEO of fucking but, tape or whatever, <laughs> you know, to have him. Uh, uh, so I, I play the devil's advocate, though. Why would you want to ascend somebody else from Boeing where maybe the culture of Boeing is one of the problems? Well, yeah, I think maybe, but, I mean, but that I, is a good point, but. but I think the, uh, the culture problem at Boeing is because of the leadership. It's yeah, well, not uh, right. But like, you know, well, Steph Stephanie like Pope is, is not like, she's not, you know, building airplanes right now. I guarantee she's in a lot of airplanes. Position. She says, yeah. <laughs> um, no, but I mean, but let's, the point that I'm trying to make, up. I, I think she's the it. current chief operating officer or something. Let me look it up while we. Oh, keep so talking. she's already part of the. Oh part yeah. Of the good old boy club. Yeah, but but that's that's what I that is that she's been with the company for a really long time because she loves it and she wants to see it succeed, rather than that's someone true. who just doesn't give give a shit. You know, well, but I'll play your point too, though, Aaron. She they they also. Could use a little bit of a shakeup too, yep. right? But I'll play well, I'll play devil's advocate to your devil's advocate and say and do it. because the first time when when I first saw this tweet from you, the first thing that went through my mind 
and I rolled my eyes was, oh God, another fucking DEI hire. <laughs> yeah, th- th- this one. That's not the case because th- I don't, don't care think, no, this who one you isn't. are. I don't yeah. care what race you are. I don't care what gender. And wait, let me let me backtrack. I don't care if you're a male or a female. Yeah. Or what what yeah, uh, race or, or race or nationality or whatever. Whatever. Yeah, as yeah. Long as you're qualified to do the job, then do the job. You should be in that position. Okay. But, well, let, let's... I'm hoping that Bowie didn't bring on Stephanie Pope because she's a female. You well, know what I mean? no, no, no. She she's been there a long time. Um, let's just read her executive biography real quick. Uh, Sounds uh, good. Uh, this is com- this is on the Boeing website. Okay. Uh, Stephanie Pope is is the current chief operating officer. So she was the COO, like I like I thought earlier, because I remember her name in all these discussions when all this went down. Uh, the Boeing Company Executive Vice President, uh, President and Chief Executive Officer of Boeing Commercial Airplanes, the primary responsibility for leading the commercial airplanes business and strengthening safety and quality across its operations. Commercial <laughs> airplane special. Well, she's kind of failed there. Well, let's promote her. Yeah, I we'll we'll see that. That's what I'm worried about. I'm I'm I, yeah, I'm just worried about that they're not going outside of the box enough. Um, but let, let's let's hope so. Um, but any anyway, uh, thirteen thousand Boeing jetliners in service today. Prior to this role, Pope served as chief offer chief operating officer of the company since January 24. Before that, she was president and CEO of Boeing Global Services. Uh, with responsibility for leading Boeing's aerospace services business, supporting commercial government and aviation. So, I mean, she knows her shit. She's got a lot of experience. Um, you know, you can continue to read um, all of her uh, background here on the website. Hold on, hold on. But, oh, scroll down. Yeah. Scroll down a little bit. Let's see. Um, what part? <clears throat> okay. So let me just read this paragraph right here. Mm-hmm. And, Pope is also a passionate advocate for developing and nurturing our talented Boeing teammates and creating a working environment where every person can thrive. As a member of Boeing's executive council, Pope serves as the executive sponsor of Boeing Women Inspiring Leadership, a business resource group dedicated to increasing gender diversity awareness. Those three words send up glaring red flags for me. Yeah, no, it does. It it it, 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 more, it, it gender more diversity awareness. A quality it, aircraft, a quality product. I could give a fuck about your gender diversity awareness. I couldn't. I don't care. Put out a safe airplane. Put out a nice airplane. A fuel efficient product. Put out mm-hmm. something better. Put out stuff that's not going to continue to give Boeing black eyes every time one of their planes has a maintenance issue. That's the yeah. shit that I'm talking about. And, oh, I know. I know. But see, here's the thing, though. In, in, in the corporate world, though, you have to remember, you've got to pad your biographies with all these fucking fancy words and, and, and things that, you know, people will perceive as like, oh, well, not only has she got experience, but she's thoughtful and she can do this and this. Now, it is being proven over the years that DEI initiatives are absolute trash and they should never be, you know, put into place. Um, just like we were talking about before, it shouldn't matter what your gender is or what your race is or what it should be about your experience. It should be about, are you skilled to do the job? It should be about, you know, do you have, you know, (laughs) the, the, the balls or the guts to do the job? Um, and that's what it should be. Are you qualified? Hundred percent. Wadman is, agrees yeah. with me. Yeah. No. It's 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 true. It's true. It's so do well. I. Not I not all. You both have already done it. But you want to go off I too? Agree. Go for it, nah, brother. That's okay. No, it's it's true. It it really is true. I mean, to me, it doesn't even seem like um. How, how do I put? It? it doesn't even seem like an argument. Like, and in, in, in what I mean by that is, it's just like. You just always should hire the most qualified individual. <laughs> like, and and that should be the bottom line. That's it. The most qualified or the one you think that's going to help the company the most from all the incidents and things that have been happening. Simple as that. Like, simple as that. But you're right. They're going to pad their resume. But if I see shit but... like that on somebody's resume, I'm not going to hire them. 
Yeah. Because well, it's yeah, like, dude, well, so that but, seems to me like that would be more of a distraction um, but to actually you, but doing then, your job. But then you'd be being, um, what's the word? Not accepting. A dick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a dick. <laughs> well, here's, okay. <clears throat> let's just put it this way. Then let's you'd be discriminating. All, let's, right. let's, let's look at all the, the, the issues that Boeing has had over the last several years with these DEI initiatives, would they still be there or would they not? I mean, look at KC 46 program. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. It's still going to be another couple of years before they get the whole vision system on the KC 46 right. working. Okay. Yeah. Look yeah. at the T seven. Okay. T seven, dude. I, I think that was, either, that was awarded like, like 10 years ago or something like that. Yeah, or, you know, yeah. and it's still delayed. It's not. It's still a couple years away from being uh, operational. Okay, um, look at uh, the seven three seven max program and all the shit that's happened on that over the last several years. Yep. Um, you know, triple seven X. That's delayed by a couple years. Triple seven X was supposed to. And she's got her hands full. Soon. I that, mean, it's that's what I'm saying, brother. The, just. No, the, I, 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 I don't, get. I, don't try I, to fix the problem with another fucking fluff piece that's going to keep stupid, the DEI warriors. Stupid happy. initiatives, exactly. Th yeah. th this should be about making safe, reliable airplanes at a Period. reasonable price on time, and that's exactly. all it should be. Safety, safe, and reliable. Yeah. Exactly. Whether you walk in to an office, a man or woman whatever white black it whatever you walk into the office hey can you help us accomplish those goals do you have the skills to do so you're hired period that's exactly. it yeah period. and, then, and if all you have, it should be and if you have more multiple candidates then you you put you know the brain trust together and you discuss the qualifications and you just Decide who you think would be best the most to run the company. One? Um, exactly. Florida Afterburner, and that's Gabe, right? Yep, Gabe, yeah, Gabe. Man, saying Gabe. what's up, boys? Hey, how's it going, Gabe? <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for watching and tuning in. And then uh, looks like Brady weighs in. Brady Kendrick, uh, just from reading on the subject, Pope may Pope may not be the long term CEO. Could see her being a bridge to the next one during this period of transition. I think more turnover in the board and others coming. Which yeah. I think we were yeah. going to talk about that next. Yeah, in right? fact, why don't we go ahead? Yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead, Tony, and open your article. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. This is. Um, you want me to? Just... Can you zoom in? Zoom in on this. Oh man, you, you got to let me. Gotta zoom get... in on this. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's all right. There you go. Okay, there that's perfect. Go. So perfect. Going along. It's a live show. Brady was it talking is. about. Um, here's a, a a new story. Boeing announces board and management changes. So right along with that. Um, and this is from uh, this is an official press release from Boeing from their website. Um, on March 25th. Is that today? God, what's that the date? Two days ago. Two days ago. Okay. Um, Dave Calhoun announces intent to step down as CEO at the end of 24. Calhoun will continue to lead Boeing through year through year end. Independent board chair Larry Kellner announces his decision not to stand for re-election at annual meeting. Steve, oh my God, Steve Mullenkopf <laughs> appointed a new chair. <laughs> a, appointed new chair. Stan Dill to retire. Stephanie Pope named commercial airplane CEO. Um, all right, let's so see that's here. kind of just a summary yeah, yeah. Well, of all the different basically changes. Basically what Brady yeah. was saying, like that's that's a pretty big shakeup. That's a lot of changes. Yeah. So um do we want to continue on on this let's here, see. Tony? Why I just want to see what I mentioned. Okay. So um Pope has been serving as chief off chief operating officer of Boeing since January of this year. Uh, previously president and chief executive officer of blowing global sir blowing yeah we i mean that was kind of <laughs> yeah. said in her i was just trying bio. to see if what brady was saying it might be touched on in the press release so she begins her role as president and ceo of commercial airplanes immediately um nope it doesn't say how who the hell is that yeah but you know um brady could oh, be yeah, right she could just be like an interim you know how mm -hmm. Kind of like in sports, when they fire a coach, someone takes over for a little bit until they get maybe who they really want. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I hire, but you know what? I, we're we're not judging her. I hope 
she does a good job. I hope things change with Boeing because we love Boeing. I don't like um, that part of her bio. Well, yeah, but you know, that's going to be got to still give her a bio. chance. But still. yeah, I was just going to say that, like Aaron said, you're going to pad your mm-hmm. your uh, bio and your resume, and she's you're going to just like the great Ronald Reagan, trust but verify. Yep, exactly. So that's what we'll do. We'll, uh, you know, well, I have good nothing... luck to you. Yeah. I have nothing but the highest hopes for Boeing to um, get out from this hole that they're in. Um, mm-hmm. and, Absolutely. Yeah. That's what you we're know, saying. We, we definitely were cheering for Boeing, but if Boeing's going to keep shooting themselves in the feet, then you can only support and cheer them on for so long. To if be they're going to keep with blowing their door plugs. Exactly. <laughs> Brady also saying a lot of times new when a new CEO comes in, the rest of the exec, executives below them get turned over. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because a new yeah. CEO comes in, that new CEO wants people surrounding them that they can work with or yep. that they know they can yeah, work well, that's with. What they, I would they, do. they want all their executive vice presidents to to be who they want. So a lot of times... That'll, you know, that yeah, if you have a new out. vision for the company, you're going to want to surround yeah. yourself with people well, who have and, that and, same vision. Yeah. Yeah. And, and not only all these problems that Boeing has, but Boeing has a huge problem they need to uh, uh, address like as soon as possible, too. And that's uh, a new single aisle jet. I mean, absolutely. You look at the market and you follow the commercial market, dude, like 737 Max and A320 Neo with Airbus, like all, all those, like the, you know, th- those are all done. I mean, you, you, you're not going to do any more of those jets after this big run that they've got mm-hmm. and they yeah. need a new single aisle jet to replace. Right. Yep. Exactly. Wadman uh, chimes in, not a good time for Boeing with the NGAD contract being awarded this year. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I'm sure they've thought of that. <laughs> you know, I'm sure that's something that's going on in their thought process, which is probably why there's a shakeup. I mean, one of the many reasons, but, but right. yeah. So is Boeing in your guys' opinion? And for those of you watching as well, uh, let us know what you think. Is Boeing one of those companies that's deemed too big to fail? Mm. Mm. Now, I well, I can fail, but I, I, I don't, I, I think it's too big to the point where they won't stop operating. I mean, so if, if anything, if, if it, I mean, I, I say worst case scenario, worst case scenario, somebody comes in like Elon Musk, for instance, buys Boeing, changes it to X airplanes and, uh, you know, or what is his you know, obsession with the letter X? Uh, you know, dude, it's just it's his thing, man. He's the richest man in the world, the smartest man in the room. Let him fucking use X. That's all I care about. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, my point is, uh, th- they're too big to fail in the sense of the product and what they have to offer and the programs are involved in. They're not too big to fail to lose the Boeing name and the Boeing ownership. Let's yeah. put it that and way. I guess that's what I was thinking. In my I mean, opinion. There's so many aircraft out there. How would they just cease to exist? Mm-hmm. So yeah. Maybe you're right, right brother. Yeah. Maybe yeah, you're right. Saying. Aid commenting, they can't be too big if they are buying Spirit Aerosystem. Yeah, you know what's funny about Spirit Aerosystems? That 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 used to be part of Boeing, and then they spun it off to try to save money. Hmm. Well, a lot of good that did them now that they're in contract to buy Spirit again, because Spirit Aerosystems makes all their fuselages. Oh, really? Nice. <laughs> and, well, especially the seven three seven Max. But the problem is, is since Spirit was a separate company after Boeing, um, basically spun them off. You know. Mm-hmm decade or two ago i don't remember what year but they also make like wing components for uh a320 and uh airbus i think it is the a320 or the a220 program i don't remember but but anyway yeah it's 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 pretty crazy um Mm. but uh (laughs) so brady says some talk out there that boeing may start looking at divesting some of the defense industry market they absolutely cannot fail on the next single aisle and civilian side of the company. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 They, they, they can't. Hey, yeah. Boeing, I've got two words for you. Sonic cruiser. <laughs> I thought bring the it two back. We're going to be this. No. Peaches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, Sonic, Sonic cruiser is a, a, a twin aisle. They're not going to do that anytime. Damn it. But, 
Uh, Generati uh, chimes in on Instagram live. He says, yes, unfortunately, Boeing is too big to fail in, in the sense of, of the programs. Yes. I mean, you can't just all of a sudden stop. Well, and when I, when I ask that question, I don't, I don't ask it, you know, that I hope that they'll fail. Cause I don't, I have always been a Boeing fan ever since I was a little kid. The Boeing 747 has been, and always will be my favorite commercial aircraft ever. And yeah. you know, the yeah. Boeing 727, the, uh, I, I would say the 717, but that was a McDonnell Douglas product. Um, yeah, well, the 707 and the KC-135, yeah, I mean, those are iconic, exactly, iconic aircraft. Exactly. You know? The seven, um, the 757, you know. Yeah. Triple uh, seven, seven, eight, seven. Yeah. I mean, dude, that seven, is all seven, just... Six, seven, four hundred. I flew on yeah. one of those to Hawaii and it was amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, I have always loved Boeing aircraft and I don't want them to fail, but damn it, they need to change. Yeah. Course. Yeah, they, they need they need to fix a lot of things. It's not just one thing. I mean, yep. they've got several programs that have just just not been managed well. Yeah, and I think it all a big portion of it comes back to hiring people by checking boxes as far as different uh, not qualifications go. But you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, um, it could be. It, and, and, and time will tell if that's really hiring if that's, them with qualified if, people. If that's the case, yeah, no, time will tell. If the Stephanie Pope chick has been with mm -hmm. Boeing since 1994, 1994, is that what? Yep. 94. Yep. And so that's, uh, you know, that's 30 years. Um, so yeah. hopefully, you know, she, hopefully he knows, she knows her shit enough that she can do some stuff and, uh, and we'll, maybe. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. And, and we'll yeah, see. We'll, we'll, we'll see when the dust settles where we are a year from now who actually is running everything and you know for sure um brady saying it again uh thanks for all the interaction by the way guys. yeah great um, conversation guys they are Keep it one up. crash or major incident away from being in deep shit hope they are feeling that pressure and hire who they should <laughs> I think that's a perfect that that, that 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 is true however one thing that i can say kind of to counter that brady <clears throat> is i think that the mainstream media has put a target on boeing's back above mm -hmm. and beyond uh sure, sure. what they actually deserve uh because there are aircraft incidents and failures across every manufacturer every aircraft every yeah. day and we mm -hmm. talked about um, that last week yeah and uh, just because boeing has been in the spotlight that that is true um, but, uh, yeah, know. remember last week, uh, we also had some interaction from people discussing that as well. Like if a, a, a tire falls off an aircraft and it's a Boeing, the media will report it. If it's something yeah. else, they're just going to stay away from it yep. because yeah, it's about it's, making Boeing look bad. It's right? not the narrative, so, not yeah. part of the narrative. So. Yeah, yeah you're right there. So hopefully things can kind of turn around. And, so uh, would it would it be fair to say that Airbus is building more aircraft on American soil than Boeing is right now? <laughs> no, no, they they are building They're aircraft, going, but uh, yeah, yeah, They're building a lot. Um, Brady, uh, Brady Kendrick, a thousand percent agree. Let me reword one Boeing quality control incident away from being in big trouble. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Crazy. It's crazy for sure. But I mean, with all the aircraft they've got out there, it's like if they have one more accident like that or a quality control issue, um, it's not like every single Boeing aircraft is going to go away. There's way too many out there. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, but, totally. but I think what would happen is there would need to be some kind of uh, an intervention or something saying, Hey, this shit's got to change. But as long as the current administration who is leading the dumpster fire known as the United States of America right now, as long as they're in power, that shit's not going to happen. They're just going to keep encouraging it. Yep. So, yep. Anyway. We, will, we will hope for a change here in a yep. few. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Hey, everybody, don't forget the uh, ramp check aviation life aviation podcast live stream <laughs> jesus is uh live got me to just uh, do it now every wednesday <laughs> <laughs> every wednesday night 7 p.m mountain <clears throat> time right here on uh what no finish youtube x facebook <laughs> rumble uh instagram live 
uh, make sure you join us. Uh, we love the interaction and, um, head on over to YouTube, to our YouTube channel, please subscribe. Um, like some of the content while you're there, watch some of the content while you're there. That way you can like it, you know, with a good heart and, uh, share it with your uh, friends and family. Okie dokie. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and speaking of that, uh, we put a, uh, a new video up this week. Oh yes, we did. That y'all, y'all should check out. It's it's actually pretty cool. It's uh, it's a it's a new video about mock and the uh, media day, and uh, y'all should check it out. I'll just kind of have it playing in the background here for a second, but but any anyway, it's got uh, it's got the uh, the interviews. Um, it's got you know the pre-flight engine startup, taxi out, some of the air demo um coming back and then a bunch of still photos so. yeah make sure everyone go check this video out oh, it's pretty awesome a, and share it video. share the shit out of it you saw a couple of little clips from it uh last week um on the podcast uh and now this is pretty much the full interview um the majority of the demo by the way i want to be a f-35 uh demo team crew chief just because it's like, just so I can do that fancy pose underneath the airplane when I'm <laughs> checking shit out. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's cool. But anyway, it's a good video, fun yep. one uh, put together. But uh, go check that out on our YouTube channel. Please, please. Yeah. And let's let's do. also just take a minute here talking about our YouTube channel and the in the page. It, everyone listening, uh, help us out out there. Will you just share our page with people? Um, you know, so we can get uh, some more subscribers, get our name out there. Um, we're really trying to push to get our YouTube uh, following a little bit bigger. So uh, help us out there if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, we appreciate. We appreciate over uh, over five hundred thirty two subscribers now. So yes, we're, so I mean we we, we 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 started the year. Gosh, what in the in the? <laughs> I don't even remember. What did we start like a year for, a year ago? A hundred and something. Oh, oh a year over ago, yeah. One hundred and fifty yeah. subscribers yeah, well, or something. Yeah. Like that, so. and, and to be honest, most of those were our family members. Well, <laughs> at least a few. Yeah, yeah. the hundred fifty. Yeah. So, yeah, right. um, on uh, on on Instagram Live, just uh, uh, Black Av Geek uh, says, "How often you guys live?" So every Wednesday. 7 yeah. p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, most Wednesdays, I guess I should say. I was going to say, if Hess was here, so, he would say most Wednesdays. So, so, sometimes our uh, our schedules uh, don't allow us to go live, but right. but uh, the goal is every Wednesday. 7 we, shoot, Mountain yeah, Time. we shoot for every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Mountain that's, Time. That's, yeah, that's, that's so right. Cool, yeah. And then uh, Black Av Geek also says, sure will. So thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thanks, Appreciate man. It. Appreciate it. I, I say Appreciate man. just Man or, say, yeah. Thanks, man. Th 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 thank you, Black Ab Geek. That's their yeah, Instagram title. Good, but then again, <laughs> now we appreciate you guys checking in. Um, why don't we move on to our last story before we go into the uh, tonight's fuck around and find out? What do you say? Black, yeah, Black Ab Geek says, "What time is that East Coast time?" So that's two hours from nine now. So that would be nine p.m. Carrying in East, carry the Eastern. nine. Nine p.m. Eastern time. So um, uh, Black Ab Geek is four. in Atlanta. Oh wait, it's got to be your bowl. Wait, no, yeah, 9, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Sorry, 9 p.m. Eastern time on uh Wednesdays, there, brother. Yes. At least, yes. So, let's see, let me click. Yes, Black Ab Geek is uh, his first name's Anthony. So, there dude, you go. all right, you go by Tony, you go by Anthony. He probably goes cool. by Anthony, which is cool, but I'll, I don't I'll, I'll, I'll let you know anyway. That's awesome. Well, hey, <laughs> Anthony, I mean. Black Ab Geek, we appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. <laughs> Taking a minute to say hi. Um, and uh, Aaron, you sent this story to us a little bit earlier. You want to go ahead and take this one? Yeah, sure. Yeah, let me uh, let me pull it up. Um, let's see here. Uh, yes, so crazy. So I'm going to read this um, from the Aviationist. This is actually a really cool story because... 25 years ago today. Should I zoom in a little bit? That zoom better? in on this. You got, you're not supposed to zoom in on this. <laughs> you got to give me a second. Jesus. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Okay. Zoom in just a little bit. That's why we have a sound. <laughs> yeah. I, I zoom, I zoomed in anyway. So 25 years ago today, U S F one seventeen stealth jet is shot down over Serbia. 
which is crazy. You guys remember this happening. I, I, I totally yeah. remember this. On this day in 1999, Vega 3-1 was shot down near Belgrade. Here's how it went down. This is actually a really interesting story. Um, it really explains that uh, obviously stealth, just because you are stealth doesn't mean you're invisible, but it wasn't necessarily the F-117's fault or the pilot's fault in this one. Um, I think this will kind of explain this. But anyway, on March 27th, 1999, during the fourth night of Operation Allied Force over Serbia, a U.S. Air Force F-117 Nighthawk number 82-0806, flown by Lieutenant Colonel Daryl P. Zelko, was shot down while returning to Aviano Air Base after a strike mission against targets uh, near Belgrade. F-117 call sign Vega 3-1 was hit by one of a series of missiles fired by a S-125 NAVA missile system, NATO reporting name SA-3 GAL. <laughs> Goa. Goa. I don't know what the hell that is. <laughs> anyway, an SA-3 uh, belonging to the 3rd Battalion of the 250th Air Defense Missile Brigade of the Army of Yugoslavia. God, say that 10 times fast. <laughs> um, at a distance of about 8 miles, according to S Sergeant Drag Dragon Matish. Matish? Anyway, the soldier later identified... The dragon. <laughs> As the operator who fired the missiles, the stealth plane was detected at a range of about 50 to 60 kilometers, and the surface-to-air missile radar was switched on for no more than 17 seconds. Isn't that wicked? There's the cockpit from uh, yeah. the pilot ejecting. That's just crazy. That uh, That's actually on display in a, uh, in a museum near Belgrade right now to this day. Oh, cool. Mm. Um, and some of the other part of the wreckage, I think the, uh, ejection seat is and some other parts. Um, but anyway, the pilot successfully ejected and was rescued between five and eight hours later, depending on the sources, air force special operations command dispatched, dispatched MH 53 M MH 53 J that's interesting. Both of those are retired now and MH 60 air crew, along with special attack Tactics airmen responded to the emergency and coordinated by E3 AWACS and supported by several specialized platforms, including an EC 130E and A 10 in the Sandy roll, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then rescued the pilot. While the shoot down of the F 117 82 0806 marked the first ever and only downing of a stealth aircraft in combat, how the Serbians managed to achieve. Um, the then almost unbelievable kill is still open to debate. On one side, the CIRMs claim they have found a way to detect stealth aircraft by using a slightly modified radars. The modifications involve the use of long wavelengths to try to paint the target at short range, exploiting the moment when low observability of the Nighthawk was degraded by the opening of the bomb bay doors. So is that is that kind of like... Um... You know, back in the uh, 70s and 80s when we had TVs with antennas, is it like just putting tinfoil on the extra antenna? Is that Yeah, that maybe. That maybe. Um, however, this was not true. According to some Serbian sources, the story of the modification was uh, purposely told by the battalion commander and served as propaganda. In the end, there was no modification to the P-18 or SNR-125 radar. What'd you uh, do? <laughs> what, what is true? is that the Serbians were extremely cautious in operating their SAM batteries, dispatching messages without using cell phones or radios so as no, uh, to risk the uh, intercepted and geolocated and relocated the batteries across the country. Hey, I thought geolocating was a conspiracy theory. Yeah, I know. I know. In the end... 1999 here. Yeah. Yeah, no shit. In the end, besides the successful tactics used by the Serbians, the shootdown of the F-117 was also the result of a series of other contributing factors. Okay, so th I think these factors this is going to list are probably the biggest reasons. The use of the same route for the third day in a row, making the flight path of the stealth aircraft predictable. Uh, the lack of def dedicated seed, which is the suppression of enemy air defense support. Uh, the fact that the F-117 approached Belgrade area flying at low level, 
uh, jinking and banking. That's a big deal. The Serbs knew that the F-117s were coming because they monitored U.S. and Allied radio comms on UHF and VHF, which at the time were mostly unencrypted. were also able to intercept NATO plane air tasking orders that enabled them to put anti-aircraft batteries at positions close to the ground targets, uh, relied on a network of spies who operated outside the Italian air bases, spotting aircraft, uh uh-oh, aircraft spotters, Spotters. taking off and others, near the Serbian borders who provided details about incoming raids. So I think that's probably... a lot of different factors. Yeah. Yeah. And then they pulled the trigger and got... And then they pulled the trigger and got lucky. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Um, He says, anyway, the achievement of Colonel uh, Zani Zoltan, uh, who commanded the SAM battery, the 3rd Battalion, and used a SAM system introduced in 1961 is impressive, especially considering that after shooting down Vega 3-1, Hammer 3-4, an F-16C of the 31st Fighter Wing, piloted by Lieutenant Colonel Dave Goldfein. I wonder, is that that General Goldfein who was... Oh yeah, yeah. It says Future chief of staff of the yeah. Air Force. Yeah, I've, I've actually met Dave Goldfein right. at um, um, at Hill Air Force Base during an F thirty five event. Uh, was um, let's see, uh, was also shot down by the two hundred fiftieth Air Defense. Oh wow, I didn't know Goldfein was shot down. Shit, wow. that's crazy. Interesting. Uh, moreover, uh, it's also emerged another F one seventeen was damaged by Serbian air defenses during allied force so anyway pretty pretty interesting story um you know i think it was more so uh the fact that they knew the jet was going to be there they knew the routes they knew Mm -hmm. you know it was flying low low level who knows if there was rain maybe the uh you know the the radar absorbent material got wet soaked by the rain and then made it more visible to radar anyway well, um, if it's flying the exact same route too, and that predictability's there. I yeah. think that has uh, a little bit of something to say about the uh, the people planning these missions, yeah. um, and a yeah. little bit of complacency say, might have been, been a factor. Confidence, yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, Brady oh, Kendricks. Uh, oh, oh, hold on one second. Let me just run this uh, comment really quick. Uh, Brady Kendricks says shooting down the stealth fighter book by some of the SAM crew that downed it is an interesting read on the subject. Sam crew mm-hmm. used excellent tactics, both in that engagement and uh, throughout the war. Interesting. I, I, I can't believe though, that, that the allied forces didn't do any kind of uh, seed mission in that area. Mm-hmm. I mean, you'd think that that would be like one of the first things. I mean, I'll tell you what being, so I was in the air force and I was in one of these mobile, um, <clears throat> they called it a mobile tax unit, which was basically a mobile radar unit. Mm -hmm. And we would be out there, we would be managing the battlefield, airspace, we would also be doing surveillance. Um, I was one of the radar operators. And the funny thing was, is all this training that we do, you know, to deploy, to set up the equipment, to actually run the equipment, run the operation. But then we're told, oh, by the way, when you uh, when you fire up your radar, your life expectancy is like 92 seconds. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so, you, you and so be. I'm surprised that after the F-117 got shot down, that there wasn't like a combat air patrol or something mm. that was up there waiting yeah. for them to radiate again and just destroy the site. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Anyway. Je- Jetterazzi on Instagram says... How do we not learn that from Vietnam with the uh, linebacker two B fifty twos flying predictable routes? Mm-hmm. Led to many yeah. getting shot down. Very yeah. true. Could go along with the complacency, Tony, like you said, the uh, yeah. you know overconfidence yeah. a little bit. They, they should have sent in some freaking wild weasels, man, and just got exactly those fucking yep enemy radar sites. It's crazy. But then again, if they shot down or if they destroyed the enemy SAM site, then uh, we wouldn't have the book shooting down the stealth fighter. Uh, book goes into that some. Sam Cruz in that war got good at using decoys and fakes that, okay, harms were biting on a lot. So that makes a lot of sense as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. But still, I mean, it's crazy. But anyway, so F 117, this photo was shot by Fast. Yes. I, um, I recognize that photo. Oh, yeah. By Holloman Air Force Base. This is in 2007 before the initial retirement of the F 117. Um, and obviously, they're still operating. 
Oh, cool. But, uh, anyway, since we we're talking about F one seventeen, just had to throw this in there. Fast shared these exclusive photos and some videos with us, and uh, gotta love the F one seventeen, man. It's just badass. Nice. But, uh, anyway, all right. I, well, I still am holding out hope that one of these red flags that we go to, we're gonna see one. <laughs> We, I, I'm thinking we're going to have to go out in the desert or yeah. you know, wait till they show up at another operation like they've done. Yeah. You know, they showed up in Fresno. They showed up in, uh, uh, you know, um, in uh, Savannah. They shown up, mm -hmm. uh, I think, in Minnesota. Uh, Duluth, north. I yeah. It was. Um, yeah. Um, so next time they show up somewhere, we we might just need to drop everything and go. And just yeah, go. honestly, yeah. you know, it's funny though, is they're going to, they're probably going to plan on flying them for several years because several more years, even, uh, because, uh, the air force, um, is certifying the KC-135 to be uh, tanked with the KC-46. So that's, uh, also some news. Funny that you should mention that. <laughs> oh, wow. Matt Wadman. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Well, oh, we're all half geeks. We're yeah. all nerds here. How funny is that the same jet is now getting certified to tank yep. off of the KC-46 when it's quote-unquote retired? Yeah. Yep. So, exactly. Interesting. Anyway. Yep. Very funny. Perfect so, timing. Cool. Good. All right. Well. Hey, okay. so are we ready for our uh, just a couple more segments? And then I think we're going to be done. Yeah, it's about, we got about 15 minutes left. So let's do um, it. All righty. So this is one of my favorite segments on the podcast. It's time to around and find out. The more you f around, the more you're going to find out. So this is a post that uh, that I saw on X slash Twitter. Um, this is from I meme, therefore I am uh, at I meme zero uh, new. A belligerent American Airlines passenger was put in a headlock and dragged out by a fellow flyer before takeoff. The man allegedly struck somebody, oh. prompting him to become enraged and spew anti-Semitic slurs. During the out outburst, the man yelled an anti-Semitic slur and blamed white people for his problems. <laughs> I'll see about it with you as you... I don't even know what word he's referring to. Yeah, I don't know. Um, as you something, something human. Uh, the man then played the race card while suggesting that he faced discrimination because he wasn't white. You're no, teaming no. up. Do you see most of you people are white hey, here? Hey, what? look, look, look to the right. We're live on X right now, Ramp Check Global. Oh, sweet. Look at that. <laughs> nice. Oh, I didn't even see that. That's <laughs> awesome. I know anyway, distracted. Hey, that's Sorry. pretty cool. Squirrel. Um, anyway, so let's just uh let's go ahead and just watch the clip. Well, I'm gonna be a tough guy, bro. I'm moving, I'm moving. Hey, you know what is up? No, it's all you're all teaming up. You see how most of the people are white here? Yeah, oh, shut like, up. Oh, yeah, they all look enraged. Yeah, I'm trying to get to my home country, and you all people made it harder for me to get to my home country. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. No, 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 no. And, and this white haired guy is thinking. Can I just say one thing really fast? I guess, but can we watch the video? Yes, we can, but I want to say something. <laughs> It, he's just the type of guy that he's like complaining that like that. And then once he says like Alu Akbar, it's fucking over for me. Well, Sorry. Well, we'll find out. You know what I mean? Anyway. So yeah. Sir? go up to the front. Sir? Yeah, go up. Come on. Hold on. I mean, the big guy. Yes. Hey, hey. Oh, okay, okay. Come on. Come on. Are you gonna chuck no. me? No, no, no. no. Like, not not fight. We're gonna go here. Hey, hey, I didn't get in your face. Daniel, you, you told me to get out. I have a ticket. Yeah, I have a ticket. Go ahead. No, hey, he's yeah. so let's hey, you, you hey. me first. Three one one. You took me first. No, let's go. Okay. Okay. Three one one. Three one one. Three one one. There you go. You got it, cuz. You got it. the wrong guy. Put your hands down. I don't touch anybody. Put your hands down. I don't touch anybody. If I was going to get anybody's face, if I was that guy, it would be that, that short, goofy looking guy in the white hat. Not the guy with the biggest muscles on the airplane. Let's go. Let's go. I don't know about you, but I'd be worried about pissing off that black flight attendant, dude. I'm sure he could fuck some shit up. 
<laughs> Classic example of someone that thinks they can do whatever they want. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. Yeah. Some people they just uh they just deserve it. Anyway. Well, um he was just looking for for that you know well, he was, looking for an excuse to play a race card it's like well on. play the race card looking for an excuse like oh you gonna touch me you gonna touch me it's just like that's exactly the perfect definition of fucking around and finding out well did you see him too when he was when he was kind of egging that guy on at first when he was back in his seat he like he like patted the guy with the white hair. He patted oh, him on the head. Did yeah. you guys see that? Yeah, it did. yeah it's yeah. just, yeah. It just, I mean, you know. especially on an aircraft too. Like you just, you're in a tight space. I mean, God, you know, videos like this, it was good and bad for our, our uh, humanity, you know, because you got the dipshit and then, but then you got someone that's like, all right, well, let's get you off the plane then. Well, uh, and, and after nine 11, anybody acts up at all now somebody steps in and you know there've been there've been several stories even a few flights that have either diverted or flown mm -hmm. into Salt Lake City where the mm -hmm. passengers have restrained this person who either tried to open a door or who was acting crazy or yeah. tried to open mm -hmm. an emergency exit over wing you know exit door yeah. or whatever yeah. And, uh, yeah and you know what after 911 nobody's going to put up with that shit anymore no, nope. you know, if these same people had the same attitude now about flyers like that, um, you know, back like when the uh, when the hijackers, you know, did their thing, I, I don't think that it would have happened. No, yeah, no, well, not now. If they yeah. have the same, you know, yeah. um, level of what am I saying? Awareness, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. What to look out for? I mean, my head's constantly on a swivel when I'm on an airplane. Well, it is when I'm everywhere now. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, Especially when we're at Cheyenne uh, Avenue shooting uh, for Red Flag. <laughs> yes. <laughs> shooting with the camera, be, be specific. Anyway, uh, that yes, passenger... Exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> that passenger <laughs> fucked around and he uh, definitely found out. The more you fuck around, the more you're going to find out. Hey, once again, everybody, don't forget the Ramp Check Aviation Podcast live stream is live every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Mountain Time, uh, right here on uh, Facebook X, like uh, they showed us. That was cool that uh, it, it said that we were live. I, I like that. I hope yes. I'm not the only one on X that saw it. Why? Yes. <laughs> I thought you added that one. I, no, I, I he was he was working on it, but it didn't get done in time. Yeah, we kind of ran out All of time. Right. I'd have to do a little bit more creative <laughs> editing on that one. Um, but uh, Instagram stories from accounts we follow is coming up. Uh, I think Aaron just uploaded another picture. What you got there for us, brother? Yeah. So I just I just wanted to say th this was actually kind of funny. So everybody knows Spaghetti F thirty five, and I oh, uh, just want to show this. <laughs> so BH proudly wore it to the Luke Air Force Base Air Show last uh, Saturday, and uh, he found Mock. And the funny thing is, is um, uh, BH was commenting on one of Mock's photos that she was going to be at the air show. You know, the demo team, all that. And uh, Mock kind of kind of bit at it, and she's like, "Oh, I, you know, what what is spaghetti F thirty five? It sounds like I I want one or something like that." So anyway. <laughs> BH found her. She loved it. Um, and she posted this on her story, which was awesome. Ramcheck Global found the famous spaghetti shirt. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. With BH. So that's pretty cool. So we'll, we'll, we'll uh, currently they're not available on the Rampswag store, but uh, I will make that change. <laughs> oh, man. Sounds like there's a high demand. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Anyway, it will be. it's that's just, funny. yeah, BH funny, uh, mock that that's awesome. Thanks for, you know, having a good time with that. That's, that's right. great. It, it that made great. our day. That was funny. Yeah, to do that. <laughs> yeah. See, see, look, even Kyle saw it in person. He was down at Luke. The shirt is even <laughs> better in person. <laughs> there you go. Hey, awesome. maybe a spaghetti F35 helmet wrap. <laughs> oh, hey. There we go. There's a good collab. Oh, that would be pretty funny. <laughs> that actually. would be pretty funny. 
<laughs> Maybe uh, for the Italian F-35 pilots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you right? Go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, that's funny. That's hilarious. I, I think that's great. But, uh, well, but anyway, I just flag. had to share, I did share that. So. Nice. All right. Well, um, I think, oh, are you pulling that up? I thought we were going into our last segment. No, let's talk about Ram Swag really quick. Oh, okay. I thought Since we usually we do that at the it, end. And then All we'll right. go yeah. into the Ram That's then right. We'll okay. All Ram right. So we'll just quickly do it again. So Ryan and I have on some of our newest Ram Swag. So does Aaron. Um, I we these uh these long sleeve hooded t shirts are just the bomb. They're they're yeah. super comfortable. The V twenty one bomb. Oh, or the F two <laughs> Raptor bomb. That no, doesn't work. Um but uh, lots of different designs. You yeah, guys here, should get I'll them. Just, I'll just show and it. Check out those this. shoes. <laughs> That's right. So um, <laughs> nice, brother. Let's see here. Um, I also had, uh, where was the photo of that? So it was in. Our- those look like comfortable shoes. <laughs> <laughs> that we posted. I'm going to have to get some of these photos from from sam that we follow on instagram and uh uh she she's really cool she has an f-15 tattooed on her arm too yeah you show anyway that. yeah it was on our instagram story yeah, i was hoping perfect. to pull up that photo maybe i'll have to do it next week because i can't find it right away because we just uh we put it in our instagram story but anyway uh she has a pair of she has a pair of these shoes he's sure you could make that happen just, oh, dude! Yeah, that'd dude, be that, awesome. that that would be sick. That'd be so funny. We should totally. I wonder who would, uh, off, dude. who would allow that? But yeah, so we've got you know some different different versions of those shoes, different hats, of course. Um, these are these are actually pretty sick. So the, these are new uh, premium embroidered hoodies. That's actually an embroidered uh, design right there, and those look so good. I I yeah. had the ramp the ramp check mark uh, logo in usa uh hoodie down at red flag that i wore um but uh but yeah there's so there's an f15 right there an f15c um got the ex got the e um all different all different designs so anyway go check out the ramp swag store it's a good way to support us Mm -hmm. um and uh you know wear some badass awesome stuff uh by av geeks for av geeks exactly Exactly. www.rampcheckglobal.com. That's uh, your place for all things Ramp Swag. That'll take you right, or Ramp Check. All, that'll take you right to the Ramp Swag store. Also, links on to uh, how and where you can uh, check out the podcast. Are Are we ready for our favorite segment of the show? Let's do it. Should Go. we do it? Go. All right. It's time for Instagram stories from accounts we follow. We follow. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Perfect. You'd be a good DJ, brother. Yeah, well, you cued me in, but yeah, your older brother was a DJ. You'd learn well. Oh, yeah. speaking of, You're great speaking guy. of, look at look at this. Perfect timing. Um, <laughs> brewing oh, a spaghetti dinner. Dinner drink. Mmm. Okay. Not hey, sure. F thirty five on there. Sure. Yeah, Kara. Car- okay, cool. That's cool. Awesome. I like that. Yeah, that's, that's great. Awesome um let's see here all right there's uh there's mock oh yeah check out those flares Flares. love it is he gonna go into the airplane i want to see that cool move (laughs) yeah nice must be from luke yeah uh let's see my a10s are forever to stay thanks hank (laughs) good old hank bring a tear to me eye mate get enough of that afterburner (laughs) look look at hank with the black and white artistic yeah those are cool pretty cool stuff we're digging it very cool there you go all right we got some luke action from uh geek guitarez underscore cody i hope i said that right guitarez (laughs) terez guitarez oh look at that Cody. anyway nice mcdill yeah yeah florida wish we were going (laughs) because a10 a10 demo is going to perform there 
But uh, anyway, cool. It's like uh, htm.aviation. Got some uh, editing going on. Should I post one or two tomorrow? Let's, Let's say see. two. <laughs> there's one. Number there's one. Two. And there's oh, there's definitely there's number one. one. Number number one. I, I guess he's from. Two. I guess he's from Utah. <laughs> oh yeah, right. Yeah, yep. yeah. yeah. Uh, looks like Audrey joined the hype. The Spotters podcast. Spotters po- What's this podcast shit? No, I, <laughs> guest on the Spotters con- Other podcast. Other people do do it as well, brother. Okay. okay, so so I I have to say this. So I'm not taking any thunder away from Audrey. Okay, but I I I have a little part of this photo that she posted. <laughs> Uh, that Cami Bammy. So that that's lit. That's a B fifty two right. pilot. We've had her we'll on be before. Guest on the podcast. So I felt bad that we weren't going to be down at Red Flag when she was going to be there, and likewise for her too. We were communicating, and she's like, "Ah, oh, damn, I have to go out of the country the week you guys are going to be there." And I was like, "Great," but so anyway, I knew Audrey was going down, so I'm like, "Hey, lit, buff pilot is going to be down there. Is going to be flying on this day." can you get shots of her? And she's like, well, yeah, I'm going to be down there anyway and shooting everything. So I'm like, well, you, you know, so basically I was like lit Audrey, Audrey lit. So, <laughs> and uh, Vi- Viper girl as well. Um, she was involved as well. Oh, they yeah, went down yeah. together. So anyway, I would like to think this is the culmination, a little bit of coordinating, making sure that lit got some shots. So anyway, cool. that's awesome that Audrey got some shots for Cammy. Um, there you go. There's a buff shot, red flag 24 to S2, uh, with lit flying. So awesome. Perfect. Anyway, Viper girl. That's, uh, that's who she was with as well. She's also really cool. Both of them were at the media event, um, for F35 as well. But, mm-hmm. uh, anyway, okay. Aviator gear, little, uh, commercial oh, there. Go back, go back. Was that a commercial what? or was it an advertisement? That... Oh, yeah. it was an ad. Okay. Yeah, it's an ad sponsored. Oh, I mean, sponsored. there it is. I don't mind we'll sponsored now. ads, but usually sponsored. Not on I'll just kind of clip through. But anyway, hey, Frank. Oh, look at that. Wow. Look at that shot <laughs> Frank got. Look at that. That freaking Dutch F-35. Kick ass. Frank he was really awesome is. to meet and hang out with. Yep. Yep. It's good to see him. Oh, God. No, bye. Oh, yeah. That's no. Okay. 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 Dope driver, Airbus pilots. The yellow <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay. Yeah, not really sure where we're going there, but uh anyway, that's kind was of that, was that? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <it's... laughs> oh, that was from Dope, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's funny. Uh War Eye, the, he's traveling the... again. There ah, you go. DFW. Cool. Uh let's see. Yeah, we're not buying. Oh, there that we book. go. Yeah, okay. Blue Angel. There you go. Jedarazzi. Yeah. Viva that place. Whom we Vegas. saw in yes. Vegas. McHenry. Let's see. Yeah, McHenry. Some shots. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Cool. That's very cool. Okay, brothers. This would be a little trivia for you. What kind yeah. of aircraft are below the Vipers? What kind of what? Aircraft are below the Vipers. The F-106. Nope. F-102. No, dude, you're you're dude, A4. Dude, this this is like a modern oh, a modern nice. jet. I can't think. think <laughs> Come on, Lloyd. Almost. The French are assholes. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, uh, a Rafale. Mirage. Oh, um, yeah. uh, uh, mirage. Oh, mirage for, uh, for fall. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're it's Mirage two thousand. Come on, brothers. Anyway, um, I didn't know if it was a picture. I thought it was like artwork. <laughs> no. Okay. All right. Ooh. Look! Look at that. The number three engine shut down or feathered. Ah, interesting. interesting. Yep. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Okay, a couple more. Uh, we've got uh, Mama Burner here. Yep. Miss Denise. Is she still some single? Blue Angel action? <laughs> she might still be single. Wow. Anyway, uh, sorry. F thirty five. Oh, that's a cool shot. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. Oh, speaking of Red Thunder air shows, there's uh, Barry Hancock's. Oh yeah, uh, aircraft right there. And I forget who flies with him. I just know Barry because we've had him on the podcast before and right following him for a while. But uh, uh, by Eagle Fifteen, nice, very cool. That's that's uh, Mike, good dude. 
Ooh, um, Tiger. Yeah, yeah that's, cool. that's cool paint. Yeah. All right. Okay. I think that's it, brothers. That is. Let's end the segment. Okay, hey, perfect. <clears throat> well, as we like to say, those were Instagram stories from accounts we follow. And if you would like for us to follow your Instagram account, uh, I don't know where I was going with that. Sorry. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Um, hey, it's Matt Thiemann. Matt the man. Thanks so much <laughs> for the help with the camera and the lens, brother. There you go. Oh, uh, yeah. Must be absolutely. for Aaron because yep. I know he's not talking to me. Yep. That's, <laughs> that's, uh, that might as well be in Arabic to me. You know what's so funny is I didn't even know that was, that was Matt Thiemann. Matt the man. I just knew that I was given some damn dope advice about aviation photography. Good, good for you, brother. Thank you for your mentorship. Anyway, good luck, Matt. Good luck, Matt, with that yes. purchase. Hey, don't forget, everybody, every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Mountain Time is where you're going to find the Ramp Check Aviation Podcast live stream right here on YouTube. X it was so cool that we saw something while we were doing our thing. Anyway, X, uh, Facebook, uh, Rumble, and of course, Instagram Live. You can uh, catch us all um, usually every Wednesday night. But if you don't catch the live stream, go to our YouTube channel. All the videos are up there. You want to catch those, just click on the live tab. That'll give you all of the uh, live streams that we've done since we started doing this madness uh, over a year ago now, a year and like two months. Um, and you can catch that. We've got a lot of new shorts that have been going up, especially from uh, our red flag experience of a couple weeks ago, also from the uh, introduction or the uh, the media day of mock as the uh, the new F-35 <laughs> demo pilot. Um, let's see. Tony Nudge Ryan, he's been sleeping the whole show. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> the hell? Hash. Speaking of sleeping, are you just barely waking up and joining um, yeah. right at the end? <clears throat> or Depends you... on if he, he's in the middle of a 24-hour shift or not. Right. But anyway, um, there's all and, and and for those of you that go to our YouTube channel too, there's a great uh, tribute video for Bayo on there too, mm -hmm. which is really oh yeah cool we didn't mention that. So yeah, yeah. Yep. make sure you check that one out as well. Spinny side up, correct, correct. Sleeping the whole show. What the hell is he talking about? <laughs> God, start over. Start maybe, over. <laughs> maybe it's when Aaron and Tony are ranting, and I'm just like. <laughs> he gets really uncomfortable <laughs> start over yeah she has wants us to to uh start over the show it's it was a long one That's you nice. can <laughs> you can replay hey, everybody it. welcome to <laughs> the ram check aviation podcast live stream i'm tony uh, i'm not playing that game yeah, this fucker's either. over <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so go to our youtube channel Please, if you have not subscribed yet, we're asking you. Let's let's get us over the hump of a thousand subscribers. I know that sounds like a small number compared to some of these other monster YouTube channels out there. But God, I know well, we have almost thirty thousand subscribers on Instagram. So <clears throat> why do we only have five hundred subscribers on YouTube if we've got thirty thousand followers on Instagram? Some of you guys on Instagram Live, just jump over there right now. Even if you don't like YouTube much, just uh, just give your boys at the Ramp Check Aviation Podcast uh, a little bit of support. We would appreciate it. Yes. So why? Look, look, yeah. look at that. I just that's uh, that's spinny side oh. up and oh, uh, right. you know look what? At that that's awesome. It's our that's, pretty. So that's, uh, that's little Hess. Yeah, little Hess and his uh, F fifteen uh, sixty foot aggressor inspired splinter hoodie. Hell That's yeah. Awesome. So since Hess is here, uh, mm -hmm. this is really funny. I screenshotted this because I, I was looking at my Facebook the other day and look what came up on my memories. I, I should have screenshotted the date, but look what came up on my memories. Oh my gosh, dude. That's, That's Hess, awesome. myself, and Aaron. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the ramp at Salt Lake. Yeah, that oh, awesome. that's hilarious. You see that? That was that's cool. cool though. Can't remember how long ago that was, but uh, it did say it. But uh, yeah, yeah, we flew the 172 today. That's right. Hess, Hess is uh, 
now belongs to it. Would you call it a flying club where you get access? You're like part ownership or something like that. Anyway, so uh, Hess has access to oh, uh, awesome. some aircraft now. Nice. So that's kick ass. Pretty sweet. All right. Cool photos. Okay, well, what do you say we wrap it up, fellas. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's what she said. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anyway, thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you next Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Mountain Time, right here. Wherever you were watching, I'm one more, one, one more Bert. Shit. We... Oh, one, one more, more one more, one Bert. more Bert. It's a new one. Come on. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm Aaron. Oh, and I'm Ryan.